Hey guys, welcome back to TEC Tube. This week's topic is using your digital multimeter. So we're going to be testing voltage, amperage, and other readings with these guys. So let's jump on into it. We have uh, three different meters that we're going to work with today. They're of different vintages, and some of them have different symbols on them that mean the same thing. Different manufacturers tend to use different ones. So we're going to try to show you different, different scenarios here so you can kind of get the idea. Uh, before we do that, though, we want to talk about some basics of the meter itself. There are some meters that do not have clamps on them, like my old one here that I've had for almost 20 years. There's other ones that do have clamps. If it has a clamp, that's for the purpose of doing amp readings on it. And some of the newer, nicer meters do everything included in one, which is we'll spend most of our time working on today. So the meters have leads on them. The leads are for the purpose of connecting the meter to whatever it is that we're measuring. In this case, we have a black and a red one. Almost all the time, it's going to be black and red, and there's only one place for it to go. Red goes to red. Black goes to black, so it's pretty straightforward in that regard. However, some meters, especially older ones like this, have multiple choices. There's only one black, so common goes on there, so that one's pretty straightforward. But I have three choices for red. For the most part, everything goes on this red one. However, however, if I'm measuring amperages, I might put them on one of these over here. So kind of pay attention to that a little bit. The other thing is that on the ends of the meat, I have different choices for tips and attachments. So these ones have pretty small, fine tips on them. I could take these off. And I can add different attachments on them. For example, this alligator clip. And I'll be able to clamp this onto something without having to use my hands. So that's very useful as well if I want to keep one point stationary, such as the black lead, and then move the red lead around the piece of equipment. There are other tips that you might see as well. For example, this one's a flat spade type one. I use that one like if you're putting in an outlet or something like that, versus that small tip that we had there. And I also have ones that are very fine tips on them. So I'm trying to get into some very small electronic circuit board or something like that. All right, so we have different choices of ones that we might choose to use in that regard. So now we're going to use these meters to measure different things on a furnace in this case. All right, so we're going to measure AC voltage on the 24 volt circuit of the furnace to begin with. So on the different meters, those will be different settings. On this particular meter, it's the volt with the squiggly line above it, right? I don't know what it's properly called, but we're going to call it a squiggly line. So that's volts AC. Now this meter is set up to read volts AC. This meter, because it's the same brand, even though it's a totally different style meter, has the same symbol on it, volts AC with a squiggly line. This one's a little bit different. This particular brand does a V and then a small AC. So in this case, we'll go to volts AC on this particular meter. And we'll go ahead and use this one to go ahead and test our furnace. All right, guys, so we're actually going to take our voltage reading on the AC side. Um, so we're going to turn our meter to volts AC. We have a 50 amp choice and a 400 amp choice. Obviously, for a furnace, we're well under 50 amps, so we'll just use that selection. Uh, let's just do a 24 volt reading. So in this case, I'm going to go onto the circuit board. I'm going to go to R. And I'm going to go to common. And see what we got. We have 27.5 volts AC. All right, so it's as easy as doing that. I could do that on anything. I could do it on an outlet. I could do it on the motor. I could do it on the main power coming in. But I'm just going to put one lead on one end, one lead on the other. And that's voltage AC. Now we'll do an amp reading on the furnace. Once again, we have different settings on the meter to indicate that. This particular meter does not have a clamp on style, so measuring amperage with this meter is very difficult. And we're going to skip that today because I don't think anybody would want to do it that way. It's much easier to use the clamp on style, right? So we can clamp this over one of the leads to the power to the furnace motor itself. In this case, we'll set it on amperage, and then the squiggly line means AC. So it's an AC um, wiring that we're hooking it to, and we're going to read amperage on it. The field piece meter is a little bit different. We actually go to the volts AC setting, and that one also does amperage, and we'll have a dual screen display. We can do volts AC with the meter leads, and above that we'll get the amperage reading from the clamp on. There are two different settings that we have here. Um, volts AC for 50 amps and under circuits, which was fine before when we were just doing the furnace um, setting. And we also have a AC setting for up to 400 amps. So depending on what we're going to connect it to, we could choose a different one, but it'll work the same way. Now we're going to use our meter to take an amperage reading. We have two choices on our particular meter here. We have a 50 amp range and a 400. Obviously for a furnace, the 50 amp is sufficient. So I'm going to turn it to AC voltage amp reading. And then on this meter, it shows volts. And I can press the select button and I can see amperage on top and voltage on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this onto one of the motors that's going, one of the wires going to my furnace motor. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the furnace on. you'll see that we're reading 5.8 amps on this particular motor. Another nice feature of this meter, I'll turn the furnace back off. I'm 
I'm not sure if you noticed that it actually jumped up to a higher spike. On the side of this meter, there's an inrush button. If I press that particular button, now my screen says inrush amperage. I'll go back to the same motor wire, and when I turn this on, this time you notice a difference. It'll record the highest number that it pulled. So we'll turn the motor back on. 11.35 amps is the highest one that I had pulled versus the five amps that we had before for the actual operating. That's a nice feature of this particular meter. Now we'll do a resistance measurement. Um, so we're gonna go back to using the meter leads again instead of the clamp on. The symbols on these are actually all consistent between the different meters. So we're gonna go to the ohms resistance symbol, which looks kind of like a horseshoe. Same for this one. It happens to be a sound one and ohms resistance. It's a dual usage one. And then on here, down on the bottom side over here, ohms of resistance. So we'll be able to take an ohms resistance reading and show that on the screen. This meter happens to have a nice set of magnets on it, so I'm actually gonna hang it here so I can use my hands a little more freely. We are doing resistance. So go to the little horseshoe. In this case, I'm gonna do the resistance of a thermistor just because it's something easy to do. So hook one lead up to this side, one to the other side. In this case, I'm measuring 12,000, 12.3 K ohms. So 12,300 ohms of resistance on this particular device. So now we use our meters to test continuity. Continuity would be testing to see if a wire is continuous all the way through, or if a switch is closed or something like that. So on the meters, we'll look for a symbol that looks like a sound symbol, or maybe even like a Wi-Fi symbol, if you want to think of it that way. I'll put my meter on that sound symbol. And then when I touch my two meter leads together, I'll hear the beeping noise. So if a circuit is complete, it'll beep. If a circuit's not complete, it will not beep. Likewise, on this meter, I also go back to my resistance measurement with the horseshoe, but it also has my continuity on the same exact setting and the meter's smart enough to know which one I really wanted. On the field piece, I actually have a setting up here that has that little sound on it. So I can click over to that for continuity. And then once again, if I touch my meter leads together, I'll hear the beeping. Now we're gonna do a continuity reading. Uh, in this case, we'll do it on one of the limit switches. We can use this to test if a switch is open or closed or if there's a broken wire or not. So we'll go in this case to the sound indicator. I'll test it to make sure it works. And I'm gonna put one of my leads on the one side of this limit switch and the other on the other. And it's beeping, that means there's continuous flow of electricity through that switch. If the switch had failed or was open for some safety reason, then I would not have that beeping noise. So if you guys are in the market for a new meter, there are some things you might want to consider. All the things that we just did on the furnace, all these meters can do that, uh, but there are some things to point out as you're shopping for new meters. One thing is the category rating on the meter. For HVAC work, you're probably going to want a category three, which is up to 600 volts. This one's category three and two, but you don't, probably don't need the two. This is category three, 600 volts. And this guy here also category three up to 600 volts. And that's fine for HVAC work. There are other things you may want to have on your meter that are just nice features to have that go above and beyond voltages and amperages. A few of those things, one, this guy has non-contact voltage. So if I switch this over to NCV, I can hold this up to an electrical outlet or wire and it'll be able to indicate to me if there's a presence of power or not. That's a nice feature to have. Uh, a few other things that are nice to have on your meter, like this particular one has magnets on it. So I can hang it on the side of a furnace or a condensing meter or something like that to make the display easier to see for me. Uh, as I open up my clamp meter, it'll turn on an LED light, which makes it easier to see things in the dark. Not that you guys work on AC in the dark or in dark, dusty basements or anything like that. Uh, but there are a few things that'll help you out in that regard. There is a space here to put a type K temperature probe. If you put that probe in, you can hold it in, an, uh, in a duct stream or uh, outside of a diffuser and be able to read temperature through this meter as well. Uh, the top of it swivels so you can get different angles on there. There is a little holder for one of your leads of your meter. So now you can hold it with one hand and hold the other. I can have the meter and both leads with just using two of my hands. So there are some things like that you may want to consider when you're buying a newer meter uh, just to kind of make sure you got everything in check there. Um, also, you should be aware that most of these meters have batteries on them, right? Well, they all have batteries on them, uh, and they have fuses in them as well. So if you were to blow a fuse by hooking up to something that's too high of an amperage, you may need to change the fuse in there. So by taking the back cover off of any of these meters, you'd be able to do that. Hi, I'm Vince Sylvester with TEC Tube. Thanks for watching our latest video on multimeters. 
If you haven't done so already, please click on that red box below where it says subscribe. By doing that, you're going to get notified every time we upload a video. And one last thing, if there's something you want to see us cover, please write down in the comments below and let us know. Thanks again for watching.